What's up guys? Welcome back to King Kraken Sports. Don't adjust your screens. No, I am in fact doing a video right now. Um, not quite ready to start talking about the particular position rankings. That'll start tomorrow. Or actually, sorry, that'll start on Saturday. Um, basically, what's going to happen today is we're going through, I've picked out about seven or eight teams that have really, really deep rosters that should supply a lot of talent for the 2019 class. Just as a basic primer as the teams that if you really want to get a good grasp on what this class has to offer, watch these teams. Um, let's get right into it. Obviously, Alabama. It's year in, year out with Alabama. They send out three, four first rounders, and then their replacements also become first rounders. Uh, starting off at the top, Jonah Williams, uh, the left tackle, easily one of the top probably five or ten players in this class. Uh, on my board right now, he finds himself sitting at number four. Um, really, truly a franchise left tackle, something that... Um, I mean, I, I know I thought Connor Williams was one last year. Um, Jonah Williams blows Connor Williams uh, right out of the fucking water. Uh, he's just so smooth, so technically sound. Uh, everything he does is just, he's really good. This, this guy should have his name called early, and he could be a bookend tackle for years to come. Um, you've also got Ross Pierschbacher. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. I will eventually learn how to say that. Uh, he's... Uh, the left guard at Alabama, really, again, strong in uh, run sport. They've got another guard, Lester Cotton, as well. Uh, those guys should probably hear their names called probably in the top 100, 150 picks. Uh, you know, not quite as good as Jonah Williams, but figured since we were talking about the offensive line, add those two in. Um, I'm going kind of fast because there are a lot of guys I'm going to have to cover in this. Uh, Raquan Davis, the defensive lineman. Um, probably a five technique and a three, four or a three technique and a four, three. He's six, seven. He's 310 pounds. Uh, he really broke out in the second half of last season, had a great run in the college football playoff. I uh, expect big things from him. He's in the top 15 on my board right now. Anthony Jennings, uh, a pass rusher, not really sure position wise for him. He's about six, two, about 265 kind of awkwardly built because, uh, you know, if he's 265, I kind of want him to be in around that 6'4 range to be a true edge. Um, but he's really good. I uh, just, I haven't really watched a ton of him, uh, but from watching some of the other guys, yeah, he, he shows up on tape. Uh, same with Isaiah Bugs, the other uh, defensive end they've got there in that 3-4. Haven't really focused in much on him, but from what I've read, uh, he appears to be someone that the NFL and a lot of scouts are, are high on. Uh, Savion Smith uh, is their top corner for the year. He's an LSU transfer, I believe. It's uh, kind of odd to go um, LSU to uh, Alabama. And, of course, there's Damian Harris, uh, the running back, probably going to be one of the first two or three running backs to have his name called. Uh, he's the third-ranked running back on my board. So, yeah, Alabama, no surprise. There's probably three or four more guys coming that, you know, we've never heard of that are going to be draft eligible as well and um, have their name called because, well, it's Alabama, and that's what Nick Saban, Nick Saban does. Uh, next up, Clemson. Again, they're one of the top three schools in the, in the, in the country. And it, it really does start with that defensive line of um, Cleveland Farrell, Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, and Austin Bryant. All four of those guys are really good. There's, Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk that there's probably going to be two of them taken in the top ten, all four of them in the first round. I'm not buying into that hype, but I do think that they're all easily top 50 players in this class. Um, Cleland Farrell is at 11 on my board. Um, where is... Uh, Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence is 17 on my board, uh, so that's it for the first round is for me. Um, you know, I've got Austin Bryan at 37, Christian Wilkins at 46, so those are guys that are easily going to have their names called pretty early in, in, you know, in the draft, in the first 50 to 75 picks, I would say. Uh, but it doesn't end there. They've got Trey Lamar, a good off-ball linebacker, uh, as well as Kendall Joseph, who could have gone last year and, and gone pretty high. Basically, if you watched... Um, 
uh, Dorian O'Daniel last year. The two guys beside him, Lamar and Joseph, they're better than Dorian O'Daniel, so uh, this should be a really fun defense to watch. And then just to get in an offensive prospect for them, Mitch Hyatt, the offensive tackle, he's pretty fucking good. A um, little bit inconsistent, and of course, uh, changing from Watson in a more pass-happy attack uh, the year before to uh, Kelly Bryant, who um, has the arm of a uh, limp sp spaghetti noodle. Um, didn't really get to see a lot of him in pass protection. Uh, he had some up and down games. Florida State, he really did struggle. I expect a bit of a bounce back year for him. Um, uh, you know, it's his last year. He really should, you know, uh, stick out this year. Big things from Clemson as well. But yeah, that defensive line, I mean, the, the conversation pretty much begins and ends with them. And they've also got Trayvon Mullen, who I believe is a top 50 corner. Now, the jersey I'm wearing, uh, Jim Harbaugh's boys, uh, the Harbaugh jersey, um, Michigan Wolverines. Um, Rashawn Gary... Top five pick in, the, in, in this class. Um, basically, right now, it stands that he's, it, you know, his ranking for me is based off potential. I mean, this is a guy that started as a true freshman, has gotten a bigger role every year he's been there. Um, he's been playing out of position, too. He has been playing a lot of 4-3 defensive end, and he's 285 pounds at, like, 6-3. Not going to be what he plays in the next level. I think if they move him inside, he has a much bigger year this year and finally shows that the hype is worth it. This dude is actually quite uh, a beast on and off the field. He's a very good leader from what I've heard as well, if you've watched uh, the All or Nothing uh, with Michigan. Devin Bush, the linebacker, um, he's small. He's listed at 5'11 and 225, which probably means he's about 5'9 and 215, if we're being honest. But this kid flies. He flies. Um, you know, really solid tackler. Uh, not afraid to get in, you know, you know, in and, you know, uh, get in on, you know, on the action, stick his nose in, get hit. For someone that small, it really, um, it really shows to his, his toughness, uh, both physical and mental. Uh, Chase Winovich. Uh, wow. Didn't expect a lot when I throw on Chase Winovich's uh, film, uh, you know, he, but he stands out. Uh, when you're watching guys like Devin Bush, I mean, this is their main pass rusher. I think he had eight or ten sacks last year, um, and he still doesn't really have much as far as a pass, you know, as, as a pass rush move. If he develops one and actually shows he has some athleticism, we could be looking at a top 100 pass rusher uh, in Chase Winovich. Lavert Hill, uh, the corner, someone I haven't had a lot of time to, you know, to specifically watch, but from what I've heard and what I've read, a lot of people see him as probably a top 100 pick, uh, which is always good. Karan Higdon, their running back, um, I'll be honest, I don't really see much of them, but, you know, I wanted to include some guys on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, he, he's... <laughs> Michigan um, had three quarterbacks, and their leading receiver had 230 yards uh, receiving. So a lot of the offense did come from Karan Higdon last year. Um, and hopefully someone that will change the passing offense is Shea Patterson. I haven't watched any of his old Miss, uh, any of his old Miss film, uh, just because, again, very different situation. Um, and you never know, especially I try not to watch transfers uh, you know, in grad transfers as much as possible so that I don't get any preconceived notion before they start at this new club. Uh, but yeah, um, Michigan, I think that they've got a, they're, they're pretty fucking loaded. They're, they're, they're pretty fucking loaded. I think this is a team that has a chance to go pretty deep and, you know, and, and contend for the Big Ten. I don't think college football playoff is in contention, uh, but this should be a really good team uh, and a really good uh, defense to scout in particular. Um, we go from Michigan to another rival of theirs in Michigan State. Uh, I did not expect to see so many guys from the Spartans that I love. Uh, holy crap, they're deep. Let's start at, with their quarterback, Brian Lewerke. Um, if you guys watched um, any of Kirk Cousins, Brian Hoyer, Connor Cook, uh, Drew Stanton, the, your, your typical 6'4", 230-ish uh, pocket passer without a lot of mobility. This is not Brian Lewerke. He's 6'3", he's 215. Uh, he's a mobile quarterback, kind of, um, bit of, bit of a gunslinger. I mean, he's a, you know, 60 to 62 percent, you know, completion type of guy. He's way more mobile than any of those other Michigan State, um, quarterbacks I just mentioned. He's a true dual threat. Um, he basically single-handedly turned Michigan State from three and nine to nine and three when they put the ball in his hands. Uh, this dude is a absolute freak. He, I'm seeing QB one talks of him. Uh, he's my QB six. 
uh, just because I want to see him put another full year of it. Could have just been a flash in the pan, one-year wonder type of guy. Um, but I like what I've seen so far. LJ Scott, however, is not someone I've really liked what I've seen so far. I see a lot of people that even talk him up as the best running back in this class, and that could not be further from the truth. Um, he's very much a limited uh, running back. He's a power back. He can catch, but, I mean, he's not overly fast. And for a power back, he really doesn't break a lot of tackles. He more just kind of falls forward. Doesn't He's not punishing or anything like that. He's just kind of a basic day three running back from what I've seen so far. Basic cannot describe Felton Davis the third, the running uh, sorry the wide receiver that they've got. Um, this dude is severely underrated. Not enough people are talking about him. A uh, big bodied kid. I think he's about six three, about two fifteen, two twenty. Uh, got some serious bunnies. This dude has some hops for days. Uh, very good at the at the uh, you know contested catches at the you know um, one on one battles. Red zone threat, everything that you would want. Really good hands, doesn't drop a lot. Uh, re really, really solid route runner from what I've seen as well. Uh, I think that this kid needs to be talked about as probably one of the top five to seven wide receivers in this class, and that's where he stands with me right now. Uh, Raekwon Williams, their defensive tackle. This is the kid that basically took over for Malik McDowell. Um, basically built in the same ilk as a Malik McDowell. Really, really solid, uh, like 6'7", 290 uh, interior pass rusher, just freakish athleticism. Um, if he puts it all together this year, we could be talking about someone uh, picked in the top two rounds. One of my favorite players in this class also comes from Michigan State, uh, Joe Batchy, the linebacker. Uh, you hear a lot about uh, guys like you know Joe Giles Harris, who I still have not really di uh, dug into from Duke, uh, Mac Wilson. Uh, I like Joe Batchy better than what I've seen from those other guys. I think that this is one of the top probably six or seven linebackers in the class. Uh, redshirt sophomore last year put his nose in everything. This dude all over the field. Uh, certain games just belonged to Joe Batchy. Um, you know, really physical. And he's also got hands, too. He's really reliable in coverage, and that showed up a lot in, uh, for Michigan State. David Dowell, their safety. Uh, this is a, a typical single high safety, free safety with some ball skills, uh, not afraid uh, to come in and lay the wood either. Really, really solid player. I think that he could easily find his way into the top 100 as well. And my dark horse guy from Michigan State is Justin Lane, the corner converted wide receiver. He's 6'3", 195 pounds, so the NFL is going to really love him based off of the fact that he's really big. Uh, former wide receiver, so you know he can catch as well. Had a couple of, of good games, but you would also have some games where he was just kind of a non-factor. So if he puts it all together consistently, we could be talking again about someone, you know, picked um, in the top 50 to top 100 just based off of his size. And if he ever actually puts it all together and becomes a bit more of a consistent, you know, corner, uh, we're talking big things from him. Ohio State, yet another Big Ten team. Big Ten is really, really strong this year when it comes to, to prospects. Um, let's get some of the guys I haven't really watched uh, out of the way. Isaiah Prince, the now right tackle, he's going to take over for um, for Jones, um, whose first name I am now complete. Jamarco Jones. Uh, Paris Campbell, there was a lot of talk about him going into last year, even though he only had like 20 career catches. Uh, he really didn't do much last year, but that was probably also due to the fact that their quarterback sucked because JT Barrett was nowhere close to an NFL quarterback. Uh, Mike Weber, he's their backup running back, but, you know, with J.K. Dobbins, uh, you know, as a starter, he, as a rotational guy, he still could probably have his name called. Uh, Dwayne Haskins, their new quarterback, a lot of people are expecting kind of a one-year rise from him, and he could... Uh, be like a dark horse uh, to come out this year. Uh, Damon Arnett wasn't impressed with what I saw from him on the field last year. Kendall Sheffield definitely wasn't impressed with what I saw on the field from him last year. Uh, the two guys, basically, you should really be watching from Ohio State are Draymond Jones, uh, the defensive tackle, could have probably been a second-round pick last year, and uh, Baby Bosa, Nick Bosa, my number one player in this class. Uh, this kid is a freak. Next school, this isn't really one that's loaded with talent, but the players that I picked out from them, um, they're really good and could all easily hear their names, you know, called in the top 75. West Virginia. Uh, it starts with Will Greer, the quarterback. Uh, I have him potentially as a Heisman candidate. I think he's a really good player. I think he's kind of put it all together on and off the field uh, from, you know, his time at, at, at Florida. Um, if he can stay healthy this year, it's going to be really big. He's coming off of a broken hand. 
Uh, then his two wide receivers, David Sills, who got a lot of the attention last year uh, because he had like 17 touchdowns or something like that, just an insane uh, season from the former uh, quarterback. But the guy that helped them get a, uh, get down the field a lot was Gary Jennings. He had 97 catches that led the team. Really, really solid you know, receiver. Just doesn't get a lot of attention. And then uh, the guy protecting Will Greer's blind side is Yadni Kajust. Uh, this dude uh, is probably, aside from Jonah Williams, the most technically sound left tackle there is in this class. I don't know why he doesn't get talked about more. Probably just because he's about 6'3", 6'4", so maybe there's concerns about his size and whether he'd have to move into guard. But this dude's technique is just almost flawless. Moving back to the SEC, we look at Mississippi State. Um, wow, this team is a lot more loaded than you would expect it you know, from years past. Mississippi State's kind of just been, you know, your mid-tier SEC team for a very long time. But no, they got some dogs this year. Uh, starting at quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. Um, he's okay. He's, he's my QB7. I think that, one, he's coming off of a very serious knee or ankle injury. I can't remember which. Um... But, I mean, he's 6'5". They list him at 230. He's a bit of a dual threat. Actually, he's a lot of a dual threat. Uh, I'd like to see him pass the ball more. Um, but, you know, I think that there's going to be some NFL teams that really really are banking on on, on making him a more polished and complete uh, player. Uh, Aris Williams, uh, the running back, he's pretty good. Uh, he's 6 feet, two, uh, 215 bit of a more solid back. Uh, really solid, just nothing overly special. Uh, they've got two really good interior offensive linemen and Daryl Williams at guard and Elgin Jen- uh, Elton Jenkins at center. Uh, just two really solid dudes uh, that you can ha- you know probably get early you know, late day two, early day three. Uh, Jamal Peters, their you know, senior corner, pretty good from what I've seen from him uh, so far. Uh, I have to do a little bit more work on him. But the two guys that everyone is talking about are Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat. Jeffrey Simmons, the defensive tackle, um, there is off-field with him. Uh, there's a video of him uh, assaulting a woman, which is obviously not cool, not good at all, and he'll have to answer that. Uh, but, I mean, when the narrative around him is, if there's no off-field, this guy's a top-five pick or top-ten pick, whatever. Um, I'm not quite willing to say that. I think he's probably easily a first-round pick. Uh, and then Montez Sweat, this dude, um, he doesn't get talked enough enough, talked about enough. Um, I think that he's up there in the um, like Joe Jackson tier. I don't think he's up there in the Bosa and Cleveland Farrell tier. Uh, this dude's a freak, easily first-round pick. Washington. Um, they got really good tackles. They got really good offensive tackles in Trey Williams. Sorry, Trey Adams. I don't know where Williams came from. And Caleb McGarry, both guys that are probably, I mean, Adams is going to be picked on day one. McGarry probably on day two. They got a good tight end in Drew Sample, a bit more of your classic tight end. You know, he's a dual threat tight end, if that makes any sense. He can actually block, which you don't see a lot from tight ends nowadays, but he's also a pretty decent receiver as well. Greg Gaines, your stereotypical, like, nose tackle, um, you know, probably a day three guy. And then three guys that, I mean, Washington has really been making a case for the last couple years that they are the new DBU. And, I mean, looking at this group, uh, Taylor Rapp, um, you know, I watched, you know, a couple of games of him in the first game. I'm like, oh, well, like, you know, I'm not seeing the hype. And then by the second half, he just started lighting everyone up. Um He's got pretty decent, you know, ball skills as well. Really solid player. Looking forward to another good season from Taylor Rapp. The other safety they've got there, JoJo McIntosh, probably a day three guy, but again, really solid. Should be early day three. Uh, and then Byron Murphy. This kid's only a redshirt sophomore, and there's hype of him being the best corner in the country. Um, limited tape last year. I think he only played like four or five games. Uh, was out with an injury in between, but yeah, he balled the fuck out. Uh, really showed up on the biggest stage uh, at the Fiesta Bowl against uh, Penn State intercepting a pass uh, that was meant for Mike Gusecki getting both feet in bounds. Like, this dude this this dude is a lockdown corner, and he's only 20. Uh, then the last team that we'll talk about is Miami. Uh, they're kind of th- – th- it's funny. They actually have someone at pretty much every major position, starting with the running back, Travis Homer, because I refuse to consider Malik Rozier uh, an NFL prospect. He's absolutely not. He's, a, uh, he's this year's JT Barrett. Uh, Travis Homer filled in great for Mark Walton last year, really uh, took over uh, the duties there uh, at Miami. 
uh, really solid season. Uh, with him now being a full-time guy, I expect big things from him, and he could very easily start rising up draft boards. Amon Richards, a uh, little bit of a down year last year because he went from having Brad Kaya, who was actually a good quarterback, to having Malik Rozier, who was more or less a running back uh, as his quarterback. Um, hopefully he actually gets some consistent quarterback play this year and can have a good season and be talked about in the top 50 to 75 players. Joe Jackson, first round edge rusher, you know, every day. Uh, Shaq Quarterman and Michael Pickney, great linebackers. Quarterman is probably a second rounder going into the season. Uh, Pinkney, I need to dig in a little bit more, but he's probably in that second or third round as well. Sheldrick uh, Redwine is their top corner. Haven't really done a ton of film on him, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of the day he finds himself somewhere in around that top 100, you know, give or take. And then Jaquan Johnson uh, is a top 15 player on my board. Um, he's going to be wearing that turnover chain quite a bit this year. So there you have it, guys. I just ran through uh, a bunch of fucking players, uh, 20 minutes or so. Come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about uh, the Cleveland Browns. Because they're in the news again. Well, they've been kind of in the news for a bit. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. As always, guys, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell another friend. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>